In 1913, the Oregon Highway Department was born with a mission to get Oregon out of the mud. Shortly thereafter, crews set to building the Columbia River Highway, where an aspiring engineer, Condi McCullough, would put his innovative bridge building plans to the test. When McCullough came to the Highway Department in 1919, the citizens had given a clear mandate that they wanted to build roads throughout the state of Oregon. His job was to build all the bridges to, to make those roads work and he took advantage of the opportunity to really create some world-class structures here in Oregon. Among McCullough's first Oregon bridges were those near Mosier and the Dalles on the Columbia River Highway, soon dubbed the King of Roads. His last on the Oregon coast would cement the enduring legacy of a master bridge builder. What makes McCullough really interesting is that at one point in his career in Iowa, he was tasked with studying arch bridge technology around the world, and he really became an expert on what was state-of-the-art worldwide at the time. And he drew on arch bridge technology around the world during his career here in Oregon to make his bridges possible. In 1922, McCullough turned his talents to the arch bridge over the Willamette River, where his Roman arch framed the river as if in a portrait. Those arches became McCullough's signature in his early years in Oregon, including in Winchester over the North Umpqua River. Inexpensive, lightweight, and appealing to the eye, McCullough sought to marry function with form. What's interesting about poured concrete bridges is they're plastic, so to speak. You can do a lot with them. And McCullough does that. He goes beyond just the basic bridge. People say, why? Well, he wanted them to look good. In 1926, he tackled the high bridge over the Crooked River in central Oregon, where the giant chasm forced him to use steel for his arch. The reason we see that bridge in that form is constructability. It's a very deep canyon, and McCullough could construct a steel arch by the cantilever method, that is, from the edges of the gorge, and then it would meet in the middle. And he once described that as one of the most spectacular structures on the state highway system. Concrete arch bridges followed at Grants Pass, Gold Hill and Prospect. By the time the Rock Point Bridge was built in 1931, McCullough's legacy was spreading. Soon enough, the Oregon coast was calling and McCullough answered. What's interesting about the coast bridges, especially the Big Five at the end, is McCullough considered these jeweled clasps along a matched string of pearls. And what does that mean? He could have placed ordinary bridges out there along this matched string of pearls, the string of pearls being all the wonderful places on the Oregon coast. But he chose not to. He chose to design jeweled clasps, bridges themselves that would be an attraction for tourists. When Highway 101 was first started in 1921, they did the easy stuff first, so they left the crossings till later. But re recall that when you came to the Oregon coast and were traveling up and down the coast, you went on ferries and you had to wait hours to go back and forth to cross them. Connie McCullough, with his skills as a bridge builder, made a huge difference because he was able to come in and deliver the development of these bridges. McCullough had already built the Depot Bay Bridge and more, but times were changing. The Depression had set in, the government was setting up public works projects, and McCullough was savvy enough to see the opportunity. They chose to do the bridge across the Rogue River because, frankly, it was the worst of the crossings. Because the Rogue River is such a difficult river, so varying in its tidal flow, it was difficult to even have ferry service there. We were also hoping in those days, as Oregon wanted to entice Californians to come up to the Oregon coast. So you needed that crossing over the Rogue River to be able to accomplish that. The aesthetic achievement of the bridge are those soaring arches, that series of one after another, slender, like skipping stones across the river. The McCullough Bridge is unique because it's enormous scale for one, plus it is a remarkable blending of Gothic architecture and Romanesque architecture. The uh, superstructure of the McCullough Bridge is Parisian, a remarkable fusion of different architectural styles. McCullough's bridge at Reedsport, the quality of, of the concrete work and the Art Deco features on that bridge are just extraordinary. You got to get out and walk on the bridge, especially on a sunny afternoon, and let the light dance and play with those architectural features to truly appreciate them. I think of all the bridges, if you focus on some of the sunbursts and the classic Art Deco, if you had to choose one bridge, as a, a soaring accomplishment in terms of its application of Art Deco, it has to be the bridge in Florence. Art Deco was meant to herald a brand new age of modernism, 
and sleekness and simplicity in design. And, and Art Deco happened in the early 1910s, 1920s. So McCullough was picking up on this remarkable, again, Parisian French birth of Art Deco in Europe and transplanting it to Oregon and the Oregon coast. The Aquina Bay Bridge, like the McCullough Bridge, are the two crowning achievements, by far the largest structures on the Oregon coast. What's really amazing about the major signature piers is that they're poured concrete and they're enormous. They are the size of Gothic cathedrals in and of their own. You've got these two very, very different construction mediums, poured concrete and steel, and he makes it work. He puts them together in a way that doesn't appear disjointed. They're seamless. He really showed that bridges and major public works can be more than just functional. They can be beautiful and they can inspire us. Condé McCullough married his man-made arches to the natural beauty around them. Today, tomorrow and beyond, the Oregon Department of Transportation celebrates this enduring legacy.